So first, um, I would like to set the stage for you in the famous book, George Orwell, 1984. And you can picture yourself in a world where the government basically has an, is an invasive type of species, basically going into all your personal drawers, reading all your personal documents, uh, going on your Facebook account, uh, writing to your friends, seeing who you're talking to, um, collecting data from you in basically any way, shape, or form where the government has free reign to put, um, to put any sort of uh, videos in your, in your apartment to check uh, who you're talking with, what you're doing, and what activities you're engaged in. Um, this is a very scary book, and actually it was a direct warning by George Orwell about the uh, danger of government intervention in allowing the government to have free reign into your personal life and no privacy whatsoever. Well, uh, what we believe is that this is actually um, what we're sort of getting to at this uh, date and time uh, in the world. We see, for instance, what happened uh, recently with the United States uh, basically having the ability to uh, engage with Facebook, Skype, uh, Gmail, all these other accounts, all this other virtual data, and basically have free reign over it without any sort of judicial um, protections. So this is why this house believes that technical companies should uh, never um, have, uh, should never share user information with the government. Uh, this is a very uh, general um, um, belief, and we would like to define it a little bit. First, we'll define what um, user information is. Basically, uh, what user information is is emails, Facebook messages, uh, Skype videos, any sort of uh, virtual information that you can somehow get on the web. So that's the definition of virtual information. Uh, secondly, we would like to say when the government um, uh, should never have this right. And what we mean by this is that they should never have a right without proper uh, judicial review going through the adequate channels of the judiciary like we have for um, searching an individual's house now where you need to go through a court order, you need to get permission by a judge, and then you go into the house and you're able to search it. Because of course there are times when the government needs to clearly protect the citizens of a country. But this needs to be done through the proper legal channels and not the way that we see happening, uh, it happening now uh, in 2013. Uh, so why do we believe this? Uh, one of it is that we're living in a new world now, and this world is the virtual world. And basically the virtual world reflects the personal world that we have within um, our own uh, personal um, uh, lives and spaces, but it's a virtual space. So essentially it's the same thing. If the government goes into your house and without a court order and goes and starts searching your drawers and taking um, uh, mail that you wrote, personal letters that you have written to people, taking your tax, uh, taking your tax returns and start going through them without a court order, or uh, stealing videotapes from your drawers, from your dresser drawers. This is essentially the exact same thing, except now we're living in the virtual world. So for some reason, people try, people aren't able to sort of uh, um, uh, understand that uh, because we're living in this new world, uh, these essential rights that existed before the virtual world should continue to exist within the virtual world that we see today. So just because it's virtual does not mean that we're not entitled to these rights and the right to privacy. That's ingrained in constitutions around the world. Please go ahead. But the vast majority of the global population doesn't have computer literacy whatsoever. Hmm? The vast majority of the global population doesn't have computer literacy, so they are not involved in, that, in this virtual uh, space. Okay. I understand, but I understand your point. But the reality is about at least um, half of the world's population has access to computers. And we're not talking about people, and we're not talking about the government having access to, um, to your houses. We're talking about technical information. So we're, uh, this, this debate is centered around uh, the part of the world which actually has the ability to use technical information on the internet and on the web. And that is the reason why uh, we're defining what your uh, rights should be and the, what the government should have the ability to do uh, in the virtual world and in your private space within the virtual world. So uh, the first argument that uh, we made was one, that uh, we're living in a new world and this world is a virtual world which is basically reflects the uh, world that existed uh, and that exists, exists with us in our own personal space uh, that we see in our houses, in our schools, um, in our backyards, and everywhere else uh, that we have as terms of real physical space. And so 
these rights that we have in the physical space should also be applied to us in the, uh, in the, uh, in the virtual space. So we should be able to expect privacy there as well from the government. Uh, the second argument uh, that we would like to make is that actually um, this, um, if we allow the government to uh, basically at will uh, invade the uh, virtual world and take whatever type of data we want, uh, they want from us, that this is uh, doing more harm than good. And so I think what essentially the government needs to prove is that if they're doing this, that somehow the population or the general public will be safer and that it's better for society than if uh, we had privacy. And unfortunately, even what we see now currently with the Snowden case, where there is this huge invasion of, uh, of private, uh, private, uh, pri private uh, virtual space all around the world, basically taking people's emails from anywhere they want, is that uh, they weren't able to show uh, a correlation between uh, the data they were receiving and greater safety that citizens within a society, within the society, uh, are having as a result of these um, privacies which have been significantly infringed upon. So I think the threshold is on the government to prove that this somehow will do more good than harm. And unfortunately, what we, would, we, what we saw even during the McCarthy era in the United States, where we had the government essentially accusing everybody of being communist and tapping people's phones and infringing on people's private rights, that this actually did not do anything to improve the security of the United States and actually created a situation where the public had lost trust in the government. And this is the third point that we would like to make about how uh, these types of infringements on privacy um, actually create a lack of trust between the, uh, the people within a society and the government. And how when this is breached, that you have uh, basically a collapse of uh, the democratic society, and my partner will speak about that uh, afterwards. So basically, one is that we live in a, in a virtual world now, which is essentially the same as the real physical world we lived in before, so our rights should be secured. Two is that this actually uh, does more harm than good. And three, that the, this is indeed uh, breaking the trust between the citizens within the society and the government. So I beg you to uh, follow this motion. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for your time and allowing us to uh, voice our concerns with what the Prime Minister just talked about. So allow me to first rebut a little bit what the Honorable Speaker mentioned. We are living in a new world that is virtual, but it is also dangerous. There have been a lot of cases of cyberbullying and crimes being committed on the line, online and just in the digital domain. So it is very important to address those issues by collecting things like information from tech companies. Uh, by not doing such a thing, we are allowing people who are causing actual problems and actual crimes to roam free in the digital age and therefore roam free uh, physically as well. Now it's also important to note that it is very often that tech companies and uh, software applications, all, all sorts of those type of things, do offer consent to their users. So in order to create an account, for example, uh, people have to read some user agreements and agree to them. So terms of use, I guess is what they're called, and agree to them. Now, let's be honest, let's put it up front that a lot of people don't read that, they just kind of brush it off. However, that's going to be an issue that we can deal with later. It's more nature of semantics and uh, word choice and uh, length than as opposed to um, actual political policies, which is what we're discussing today. So. Tech companies should absolutely allow governments to collect information on users because in the interest of national security and things like the protection element of our society, but also for the greater good. So for example, the creation of social programs uh, and as well as dealing with very important social issues like unemployment. I will go into that in just a couple of minutes. There's one more thing that I wanted to rebut, which was this communist witch hunt, which was brought up in the early Cold War era, which uh, we as the opposition believe is a little bit irrelevant, seeing as how we are not living in the Cold War, but it is the year 2013, so we can definitely figure something out between our society and our government. Point of information? Go Can't ahead. you see the, the, uh, 
uh, this sort of um, identical type of activity happening where you had communism and now you have terrorism, essentially the same things going with this invasion of privacy and how we should have learned something from the communists there? Of course, that's definitely a great point and we should definitely learn something, but lessons are transferable and things we learn there have to be applied with due diligence to today's society. Just because it happened then does not mean it's going to be the exact same thing today. And so what I can tell you is that even though it might seem quite similar, the fact that national security is a major issue with, with very recent uh, developments in, uh, going on in the Middle East, um, as well as uh, things like 9-11 and all, all of those, have created this atmosphere that will allow us to protect our society. So if we do apply the lessons, like you mentioned, from the Cold War era, but we do it in a proper way that's more uh, relevant to today's day and age, then we can totally come up with the idea that the governments should definitely collect information from tech companies. Please. Sir, are you implying that the terrorism scare, the global terrorism scare, is somehow a useful tool because it legitimizes the government infringing on people's privacy? Say the first part of the question again. Are you saying, are you implying that the global terrorism scare is good because it legitimizes, it legitimizes government infringement on privacy? Absolutely not. I think you're missing the point here. Global terrorism is not a good thing, and no one, I think, is advocating for it. However, there's definitely measures we can take to prevent it. The number one thing being allowing tech companies to share and collect information on users. For example, let me show you that, let me explain to you that there are ways that uh, social media networks as well as other websites have been uh, stopping potential crimes because information has been collected. There have been cases of cyberbullying, for example, where young children have been bullied to death and have created just absolutely lives of insecurity and horrible lives for themselves because of this. However, because they were online, because their information was collected, there have been ways that uh, potential big issues have been prevented. So what we're trying to show is that by collecting information, we can prevent things like potential terrorist attacks and crime, as well as uh, social issues like even cyberbullying. So, uh, for example, there was a, an event that the Jewish community was going to have in Budapest uh, a few months ago, but the government knew about it because they were tracking the information and they prevented the event from being attacked by extremists because there has been uh, some outbursts once in a while. This is a great example of how a collection of information can allow government to not only just spy on their uh, population, but in fact help them out. And in this case, it was very great for the people because it was a preventative measure instead of just what uh, the government seems to think as more of like a uh, spying measure. So we got to separate those two and just make sure that we understand there's preventative measures and then there's just uh, everything else, please. But can't you have a preventative measure through the legal uh, judiciary process? Why should you give government free reign to go wherever they want to your personal property? Would you allow them to go into your house and to steal records from your personal bedroom? But who says they're stealing them? What if you invite them in, you open the door and you let them in? Like I mentioned earlier, there are consents that we sign. And any time we use things, such as Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media, we have to sign and say, yes, some information can be shared, some cannot. Please. Sir, have you ever read the 70 page terms and conditions that you usually sign when you sign up for a website? Like I mentioned, I personally did not, but this is an issue of semantics and word choice. We can definitely figure that out. If you get a shorter uh, consent, uh, maybe even cut it down to two or three paragraphs, let alone, you know, maybe even sentences. So that is another issue that we could tackle, but today we're discussing with the fact that we should allow governments to collect information. Let me just bring up my last two points here that um, I mentioned social programs for the people. We on the opposition think that, for example, if people are discussing issues on Facebook, online, or wherever else that are very pertinent to society, and we find out that, hey, uh, there needs to be cheaper bus fare, like for example, in Brazil right now, going on, as we are all familiar with. Perhaps we can prevent such dangerous riots and uh, such harm to our great society because by collecting this information, we'll know ahead of time. So we'll create better social programs for our people because of this medium. Instead of having our people go out and uh, do damage to government buildings as well as harm themselves. Last thing is the unemployment issue, which is the fact that you know it is quite high in Europe right now. And as a nation that is part of the EU, there are ways we can perhaps see these issues in a better light. 
And so, just to emphasize that a little bit more, uh, people can, for example, discuss these things on a social media network. And we can definitely prevent that by uh, sharing and collecting information. Thank you very much.
huge scandal in society and also it has the big uh, consequences in uh, relation to the change of the uh, president, etc. Et so uh, we don't want uh, in our society the, uh, uh, any such social, uh, uh, we think that this kind of initiative like to uh, be about to collect information would lead to um, social process of people and uh, we think that it is really not what we want. So do you have any questions? Not at the moment. Yeah. 
some measures to solve that. So, uh, we, sh uh, we strongly believe that the government is for the people and uh, with this measure, uh, it can uh, lead to the, to the better uh, uh, of the people. So, uh, what I'd like to emphasize again is that uh, criminal, uh, criminal cases should be prevented, terrorism should be prevented, and the uh, social uh, good of the people is uh, the most important thing that we need to emphasize. Yep. But I think the, the argument is, is that actually it is happening now, that the McCarthy era is basically the era that we're living in now, except it's in the virtual world, where people's privacy was waived during the McCarthy era without having proper judiciary process to get search permits for people's houses, and the trust in the citizens is being violated. Essentially, the same thing is happening, happening now. In the United States, you can see with Snowden what happened and how the government was taking information from the virtual world. So what's the difference? It is the same. What we believe is that, is that the trust of the people is not uh, weakening everywhere, and even if it does, uh, at other points, it, strength, it gets strengthened. So let's just see the terrorist cases, what they can prevent terrorist attacks or extremist attacks, that are pretty uh, important cases. And also in Asian countries that you have mentioned, these people uh, do not definitely lose their trust in the government. Since they see that it's better for their economy, their uh, society, with the good social programs that the government can find, because they have uh, information and knowledge about uh, the people's needs and their requirements, uh, that can help uh, the improvement of their economy. And uh, Asian, we can see that these Asian economies are doing better than uh, uh, the European economies right now, or even the United States. So uh, I don't think that it's, it will be a strong point on your side that a people's trust is lost. Yeah. Uh, what, I, what I would say is that you need to prove that the government uh, would actually be doing more good than harm by allowing them to have free invasion of the virtual world. And name one or two terrorist attacks that have been prevented as a result of any sort of program that's in place now, compared to the billions yeah, of files that have been taken. So, the reason you are not able to show that is Exactly, that they were prevented. Yeah. So, um, but I would like to say that uh, th these programs were, were very effective, and, and the way these people are working on these data, analyzing these data, getting information through them, is uh, to avoid uh, things like that. But you cannot even name such cases that would have harmed the people. Because, yeah, maybe they get some information that you might not want to share because of some privacy, <laughs> private reasons, but uh, they are not as strong as, as uh, the merit, the, the benefits we can gain uh, from these acts. So yeah, you don't want them to get access to your family life, but um, nowadays we don't have uh, those governments who would uh, make any negativity happening to you from this data. Um, so what we wanted to say, I would like to emphasize again, that the prevention of crimes and the national security is more important than all, and also the good social programs, uh, the state of the society can be improved, and uh, this is, what should be considered here. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you, Madam Speaker. So, uh, just as a quick po uh, couple of points of rebuttal, I guess all we have to rebut here is why uh, national security is, is a bad excuse to infringe on people's privacy. So, I'm going to quickly tell you why we think access is bad, government access to this kind of private information, whether, it, whether it's stored on Facebook or your Gmail account or wherever. I'm going to tell you why access is bad. Access is bad because it opens the Pandora's box, right? It opens the Pandora's box of government being allowed to do this. And we think that's bad enough in itself. But to illustrate, I would like to say that today what we have is, I think the, the figures quoted last week in the news were that there were less than 300 uh, warranted you know, intrusions into private information in the past couple of years since the PRISM program has been working, which has been a sort of government backdoor into virtual reality, uh, the virtual world. And so uh, out of those 300 or so warrants, 
about 50 have yielded like useful information, right? And those 50 have may, may or may not have, we don't know yet, they may or may not have contributed to stopping or halting or slowing down certain attacks or et cetera on national security. What's, what hasn't been proven is that the government knows where to stop. What's haven't been proven, and the reason this is an opening of Pandora's box, is we don't know if the government is going to stop at any point. So what if next year, you know, there's like a, a wave of cocaine imports into the, United, into the United States or into Europe or wherever, and government suddenly starts saying things like, oh, hey, so now there's all this drug, you know, trafficking going on, so I guess we'll just like, you know, read the messages of every single person who's ever been arrested for smoking a joint. Like, what if that happens? We don't know what that happens. We don't know if the government is going to limit itself. And this is why, as the motion reads, tech companies should never share user information with governments. And as our extension, we're going to talk about tech companies and how it's really interesting what they can do. And we think that's it's a good, it's a sort of, they should be like a driver of social good, right? So why do tech companies have to take the initiative? And it, it, the answer, we believe, is pretty damn simple. And this is what we're going to do. No one else is going to ask for it, right? And I'm going to illustrate why. Government isn't going to ask for it. The people, the users, aren't going to ask for it, unfortunately. And the advertisers, the people who, by the way, all this data we're talking about is being collected for, so the tech companies can sell advertising based on that data, targeted advertising. Those advertisers are also indifferent, right? I'm going to tell you why, and I'm going to tell you why that tech company is at the center of, of taking action against this sort of uh, illegitimate invasion of privacy. Right, so why would the government not regulate itself? Why would it not, you know, take the initiative? Well, because they're the beneficiaries of the situation. They're the beneficiaries of the status quo. They, you know, bring up national security reasons, as we've, as we've heard from the first uh, opposition. National security reasons that sometimes are well-founded, and in many cases they are useful. But the problem is, is all of this is done incredibly intransparently. It's completely opaque. We don't see any, you know, background. We don't see the judicial process happening. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of public pressure on governments to make all this more transparent. And even the pressure that exists is pretty actually childish, so it's, it won't be taken seriously. It probably won't happen, right? So government isn't going to like you know stop the national security reasoning. It's also sort of like simpler, like right, like a lazier solution to crime fighting and terrorism fighting. It's it's a last resort being used as a first resort. So infringement uh, an infringement on privacy should be something like the government only does if it really feels like oh my god like the, the bomb is going to go off. We have to go into the account, right? Like that's when it should be used. And that's not when it's gonna. That's not when it is being used. It's being. It's being done systemically. It's being done systematically. There's a. There's actually a government code base, right? Like a program for accessing this data. It's so institutionalized. We don't know how easy it is to hack and all that. It's. It's just a lazy solution to a problem that government has better tools to both prevent and go after after the fact. So. Maybe, you know, instead of, uh, what the government is doing right now is instead of not angering Isl Islamic uh, terrorism and extremists, they just, like, stop them on Facebook. And we think that's an inefficient way of, of, of you know, fighting terrorism and fighting crime and all that. And cyberbullying and all that, they're great examples, but they're, like, really, really tiny examples, and they have very little to do with the virtual reality. So while cyberbullying is different than uh, real-life bullying, we don't think that following, you know, like, people on Facebook messages or anything is going to help the solution. We think more overarching social programs that are not relevant to this debate, by the way, should be uh, followed. Right, so why, don't, why won't people ask for it? And why, does, why do tech companies have to uh, take the initiative as opposed to people? Well, people are indifferent as hell. They don't know, they don't care, they don't want to know, they don't want to care. And basically, this is a big problem that has to do with many issues, right? Like in modern democracies, we have this problem of, of engagement of the public with, you know, with their own issues, with their common issues. And the thing is, is we're not going to solve that problem today. What we, can, what we can say is why the tech company is in a better position to advocate for an individual than the individual. You know, right, so like the public, the people, the users, they don't know contracts. They don't read the 70 page terms and conditions. They don't do that. They just click agree. They sign away their kidneys, as people say on iTunes, right? Like that's what's happening. And people can be made to read 70 pages every time they sign up for a damn website. Meanwhile, though, tech companies have huge, you know, swaths of, of lawyers, and really huge legal teams. They know everything about the, the uh, legal issues that concern their companies and their users. They know how to construct uh, contracts that, you know, take away the rights of their users, so they will obviously know how they can construct contracts that will advocate for the rights of their users. And we think they should really, like, take initiative here with their, with their legal backgrounds. 
And right, so people also take freedom for granted, right? And that might be bad, it's, it's not really relevant now, but they take uh, freedom and their, their privacy for granted. Tech companies have more of a broad outlook on this. They know exactly how these mechanics work. They know how their, their, uh, their uh, solutions work. So they, they obviously are in a better position to advocate for their users than the users themselves, right? And advertisers, as I've said, are pretty much indifferent. They have little to do with government. They're not like really in this matrix of private person, tech company, and government, this sort of like, you know, uh, three-step uh, ladder. They make money off the data that's being collected and then they legitimately shared with governments but they're not really concerned with where the data goes, right? So they're not going to ask for it, obviously. And this is why tech companies are at the center of this. Tech companies have to do this. Tech companies have to take the initiative, and the focus is on them, because no government and no public, no individual you know, uh, group of people are going to ask for it as, as well and as efficiently as tech companies. And there needs to be this sort of new mechanic to advance social issues, and this is sort of our rounding off point, right? Tech companies are great advocates because they're so, so deeply engaged and entangled in people's lives today. They're, they're, they're a different kind of private company, a new kind of private company. A company that can advocate more on their users' behalf, and we think it's, their moral, it's a moral imperative that they do so, and we believe that tech companies especially should never share user information with governments. Thank you very much. All right, thank you for the floor. Um, so first of all, I would like to reflect uh, some of uh, the claims we have heard uh, before. And uh, one of them is that uh, the government may not know where to stop, where, are, uh, where the limits are. So uh, we think, we honestly think, that uh, the government is doing this activity because it is necessary. So it's, uh, it's, it's definitely in a democracy. No, knows where to uh, where to stop, where uh, where to stop in order to not violate uh, personal uh, personal rights, because um, it is uh, part of uh, of uh, the democratic values, uh, and therefore we should trust our government because uh, it is uh, acting for a greater good as we could hear it uh, before. Um, we have uh, three points in order to extend this uh, motion, and one of them is the trust in the government. And uh, the other one is why uh, collecting uh, these data, or uh, uh, when, when a tech company is sharing uh, information with gov government, why it is not spying, why it is not stealing, and our third point is uh, that actually it can be it can cause a bigger harm if we if the government do not uh, take these doesn't take these steps. So the first one that uh, we should trust uh, our government because um, as we could hear it is a West security issue um, we are concerned with and it is for the sake of uh, our personal security. Uh, we, we uh, shouldn't be uh, worried in case we do not uh, commit the crime or we um, were doing cyber bullying or virtual abuse because it is just simple monitoring in that case which cannot even be related as or labeled as personal because uh, uh, some, of, uh, some of these uh, data which are collected, uh, which are shared, not even uh, uh, that even uh, uh, shows uh, the, the only the data, and it can be uh, attached to uh, uh, the certain individual. So, um, no, thank you. Um, uh, yes, and uh, why uh, number two? Why we should. Uh, um, uh, trust our government um, because there are uh, other uh, organizations or governments as we, we could hear uh, authoritarian regimes which, uh, which exert uh, control over their society and they can do it, they can do um, data mining uh, towards 
our uh, nation, our country, hence our government with, uh, with this shared data uh, can protect us uh, if, if uh, it knows us better. Uh, so it, it, is, uh, it is an accessory issue. Uh, the keyword is uh, protection and uh, that uh, it, it is just, uh, the, our government uh, wouldn't do it by, uh, for its own pleasure, it is, uh, it is something necessary as I mentioned. And why it is not spying and why it is not uh, stealing, this is uh, the next uh, <laughs> um, point. These uh, data, so uh, these are uh, usually emails and uh, Facebook profiles as we put here. Uh, these can be found at a lot of uh, places. If something is shared on the internet, that never can be removed uh, anymore. So, and also with the terms and conditions, you should be aware of that. And, and the, uh, my main question is that, why don't you read those terms and conditions? Yes. I, I also doubt that, I, mean, I don't really know completely, but I don't think these terms and conditions say I agree that the government can take whatever data I want and that. I don't think that's in the terms and conditions. Um, it, it can be included in the terms and conditions, and if you do not read it, you do not uh, even know what, what is included in uh, that set. And uh, it is each person's uh, responsibility <laughs> to uh, to be aware of what he is signing, I suppose. Uh, and uh, uh, also, for example, Facebook, everyone can see uh, what you're posting, your, uh, where you are. It's, it's not something which is, uh, which is a secret. It, it cannot be um, treated as a secret. So uh, it can be a little bit pointless uh, talking about uh, uh, personal uh, stuff in connection with that because uh, it is not uh, uh, covered with anything if, if it is uh, on display uh, on Facebook, uh, for instance. Um, okay, and, uh, and uh, yes, our third point is. Uh, I have mentioned it before, uh, other governments and organizations who are uh, literally spying uh, towards uh, our uh, citizens as well. And uh, uh, by this protection, the government, it can be an, uh, in, this, um, in this way, the government can protect people because uh, the, the internet, the virtual world, uh, basically an area we do not know, hence we need uh, a safeguard. And uh, the world is broadening, and uh, the privacy space is broadening and transforming, and uh, we should catch up with, uh, with it somehow. Uh, as uh, the open government uh, mentioned before, it is the 21st century, and uh, there is no judicial review and uh, any guarantee that uh, it, it will stay on the right track. Uh, well, we uh, think that uh, it can be formed in the future and it doesn't necessarily uh, mean that uh, it's, uh, it, it can cause uh, bigger harm uh, if, uh, if these data are not shared. So, thank you. Freedom or security? It may be a cliche, but that's the major clash in our debate, and I will go more specific on this. But first, let me some rebuttal on uh, the closing uh, opposition side. We heard that we shouldn't worry, we, the original and, uh, and average citizens, because who didn't commit a crime, shouldn't worry the reason. But, uh, we think, and there are um, very specific and justified examples that this detection system is just not that perfect and doesn't work that smooth, doesn't work as smoothly. That we should trust on the whole governmental and the whole virtual system in this case, because 
For example, there's the Boston bombing where they also ex uh, expected some um, solutions and uh, some prevention from it and then everyone knows, I think, in the room how it uh, actually worked, finally. So we think that uh, whether it worked or not, it's not ethical because in this debate we focus on the values and, the, and on the ethics of the whole issue and uh, it's important in general but more specifically on, uh, on this internet uh, based world and in this new world and virtual world as it was already mentioned and uh, yeah first just uh, talk about this freedom and security clash we heard that uh, even in general it's not ethic from a government to be omnipotential and doesn't let any private sphere for the citizens because uh, we think that uh, the government is for the citizens and they should uh, respect its boundaries it shouldn't uh, use every data and, uh, and every information about, uh, about its people because yeah, we can say that uh, it serves their uh, um, their security, but uh, more likely it's dangerous and uh, we cause more harm than good. It's also a question the debate whether this whole system, whether this step to give this information for the government is uh, cause more harm than good. We think on the uh, government side, of course, that uh, it's more harmful and. Um, yeah, the government's, uh, the government's task is to protect its citizens, groups and individuals alike and we think that in the new world, in case of tech companies, it creates a completely new and different uh, world and circumstances and we should be aware of it. Because we share more information, not just data, but our most intimate acts and habits and everything throughout our lives, our uh, the no shares and episodes which people actually share on Facebook, which actually appears on the emails, and we think that it's not the same with the world where we actually lived in um, the past decades, and we think that in this situation we should be more aware of people's individuals' uh, security, and in this case we think that this freedom, the people's freedom, is more important. Why not? ethical to give this information for the government because uh, and why should tech companies do this because the government of course can uh, use this information it's beneficial for them it's more convenient to use all this information to prevent but uh, as we mentioned it should be a last resort but we even would uh, close out this uh, no, thank you. This scenario, because we think that uh, it easily uh, opens Pandora's box and it easily uh, gives way to this slippery slope-like effect. That uh, how they will detect people on uh, to on the basis of their religious views or their uh, their verbs in their shares. We don't really know how they would really prevent or how they would. Uh, French people and just go into their private sphere which they shouldn't because they don't do it in real life and they shouldn't do it in the internet and uh, in this new world uh, so they neither should do it and we think that um, yes please uh, could you please explain how would it be more safer for us to have all these uh, uh, personal data of us in the hand of illegitimately uh, existing technological companies and the legislative government. So why would it be just a government? Um, we think bad. that these tech companies are absolutely legitimate and of course they are quite new uh, members and actors of, uh, of our world and our security system but uh, we should trust on them as well. They are <laughs> legitimate actors, they, they work uh, absolutely justifiably so we don't think that uh, we should uh, mention them as, uh, as criminals and as uh, actors who we shouldn't trust. We think, and thank you, that uh, it's just not justified to give this information from the tech companies. Why? Because people 
share this information, of course, but as we mentioned, they don't read the terms and conditions. Why? Because they can't take this burden. The whole system doesn't build in a way which uh, actually serves their security in this way. They won't really uh, go along with this acts and with this habits and we think that we shouldn't burden them in this way. It's not ethical to say that, hey, it's in the terms and conditions and it's not, we think, that this, uh, whether they should uh, give this information to the government. But uh, even if it would be there, it's not ethical in this way and we should protect the citizens and we shouldn't give, as, and the tech companies should be uh, the friends of the users and should support them and shouldn't uh, take advantage of the situation. And it's a private sphere, it's a private company, Google, Facebook and everything, and we don't think that we should uh, let governments to grab this information from these private companies, the information of private uh, sphere of the individuals of the citizens, and of course, internet is dangerous, and that's why the government should protect its citizens and not abuse and take advantage of this. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, first of all, um, I have to agree about the main clashes of this debate, which were uh, the importance of national security and personal space. And um, <clears throat> I think that personal space, and we as the closing opposition, General think that they are equally important. Um, <clears throat> but first of all, let me just uh, review what this debate has been about. So, um, in opening government, we've heard about uh, how it's just like searching your drawers in the Cold War era. Well, I would like to point out that you don't put the uh, contents of your drawers on display. However, when you go on Facebook, you um, actively decide what to put there. Uh, you can actively decide if you want to share uh, what kind of meal you've had at McDonald's, uh, and it is your choice. Um, yeah, no, thank you. Um, what else? Um, we also heard about how there are other ways to uh, address and investigate the crimes that are um, either organized or committed online. Well, I don't think that there are other ways to uh, act against cyberbullying, as the opening opposition has pointed out, and uh, this includes online pedophilia and such things. It's, no, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I think that this, this is a serious issue, uh, but this is not really the main clash of this debate, so I'm going to um, um, go further. Yeah, we as uh, closing government, um, yes, so, sorry, uh, <clears throat> um, we have said that, we have emphasized that we should trust in our government, and because I don't, uh, what we are saying is that the government uh, should not go about like, hey, I want personal data about this, 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 and this person. We are saying that the, that the government should be able to collect data when uh, it is absolutely necessary. Like in the cases of uh, the organizing of uh, terrorist attacks or protection of uh, demonstrations and uh, uh, rallies like, I don't know, like uh, an uh, LGBT pride kind of <coughs> event. Uh, um, if there's any um, campaign against it, the government should be able to find out about it and act against it to protect its people. Um, <clears throat> yes? I may direct your attention to the fact that we're, we, there was a lot of emphasis on tech companies in this debate. How, what do you think the moral, uh, moral burden on tech companies is when giving out information? How do they choose? Why should they choose? Uh, thank you for uh, your point. Yeah, I think that um, <clears throat> Tech companies are, yes, they are equally important. And, uh, wait, I have kind of lost my thoughts in my papers. Um, yes, so, uh, <clears throat> um, the tech companies uh, should, uh, uh, well, yes, the debate has uh, mentioned a lot of, we've been talking a lot about terms and conditions. 
And we also think that the terms and conditions should be simplified. And if uh, the tech companies should admit that uh, that they can also benefit from giving information to uh, the government. And uh, <coughs> uh, yeah. So what I have been, uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, <coughs> they uh, could be able to uh, to. Uh, put together terms and conditions that are simplified, and if they decided that for them it is good to give out uh, their users' data to the government, then uh, they should have something like a disclaimer at the beginning of the terms and conditions in huge red capitals, like, hey, we are going to give out your data to the government if necessary. And that is what we are uh, being emphasized on in closing government opposition, that it is this would only happen if it is necessary. It's, it's not like uh, my data could be useful to the government. I'm just a gray face. I'm just a person who doesn't do anything important. And <clears throat> if I were some organizer of some uh, crime um, institution, then I uh, then I would probably worry about what I put on Facebook. And um, <clears throat> um, no, thank you. Um, I would also like to emphasize again that how the information that you share online can, uh, it's, not, it's usually not a secret, and um, no thank you. Um, what we have also said in closing opposition is that it's uh, not, <coughs> uh, so it is, uh, it is not, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, that not giving out information could be harmful, again, in uh, crimes, no, thank you. Uh, in the cases of crimes, and also how most of the data that can be collected could be collected in another way. So, if I am, <coughs> uh, if uh, the government wants to know something about me, they want to know, uh, probably they want to know my name, my email address, um, my telephone number, and uh, most of this basic data can be found anywhere. And, uh, there has been uh, a lot of comparing this to the Cold War era. Well, in the Cold War era, without the internet, governments could spy on people. And what we are saying is that the internet might make it easier, but it might uh, <coughs> also uh, make it easier for the people uh, to know what they are sharing because they are not sharing the contents of their drawer, because they are not showing, not putting their room on display. Uh, but they, people are putting their personal lives on display, but um, <clears throat> it is up to them uh, what to share. And um, I we would still like to emphasize that it uh, it is uh, you should trust your government because if you haven't done anything wrong, then there is no reason for any kind of government to um, uh, to go and spy and log in to attack your Facebook account and collect all your messages because if you, uh, well, if your conscience is clean, then uh, there is no problem with that. So thank you and please